All right, today's video, a little bit different. I'm gonna teach you guys how to make a very, very simple PVC P-rail. All you need is one two inch PVC pipe from Home Depot. Make sure you get the solid core, schedule 40. You can make this as long as you want. I picked 10 feet, so everything is gonna be 10 feet here. I also got two two by fours, and those are 10 feet long as well. And for the braces, you can get any kind of braces you really want. Me, I prefer to get a corner brace and then two double wide braces. The corner brace just adds that like metal in the middle to make sure it doesn't collapse on itself as easily. And then the double wide braces are obviously a little bit thicker than regular braces. And all together, this build came out to just over $40. Just over, like $40.50, or something like that. But you could definitely save money by making it shorter because this is a 10 foot setup. If you did like an eight foot setup, it'd be considerably shorter or considerably cheaper and get different type of braces or just use a piece of wood as a brace. You can get creative with this. It's, it's very, very simple. You guys can probably already tell how I'm gonna put it together. So the thir first thing you're gonna wanna do is put all your braces into one board at once. That way you can line it up and the other one can just pop right on. The first time I made a P-rail, I made a mistake of kind of screwing in both boards at the same time as I went along and then it wasn't perfectly square. Another important thing is to try to get the straightest two by fours you can. This is probably the longest part is going to Home Depot and trying to make sure you get a perfectly flat, perfectly straight two by four. I had to dig through the piles. Obviously you don't need to if you want a little bit of wobble or if you plan on just fixing it yourself, but if you wanna make it as easy as possible, let's try to get some flat two by fours. All right, this next step isn't completely necessary, but I like to do it because it just makes it so much easier. And I bought a cheap drill from Walmart that was like $20. So putting a drill bit in the drill first and then making a pilot hole between or in the hole that you're gonna drill the screw in makes it a lot easier to actually get the screw into the wood. When I first built this, I just went screw directly into the wood with no hole and it caused my super weak drill to kind of hang up a little bit. So if you got a powerful drill, don't even worry about this, but I don't, so. I use, you can use a wall or anything to try to line up the braces. That way, they will be at a perfect 90 degree angle that you're gonna want to screw into the other piece. I'm gonna start on the end over here. Good hole right there. And a hole right there. Now, when I try to screw in the screw, it'll fly right in. I'm gonna go make the holes for all the other braces. So let's do that right now. I use the two corner braces on the ends and then the double wide braces in the middle. Oh no, my drill is dying. I forgot to charge the battery. I will be right back. Okay, I'm back. I got a drill with a cord on it now, so we can finish this up. The problem with this is it's, uh, it's almost too strong, but it should be fine. All right, now that I've finished the holes for one piece of the wood, you're just gonna put in the corresponding screws. Pretty simple stuff. To make sure it's perfectly flat against the wall. There it is. For this part, what I like to do is get another piece of two by four and make sure you have it propped underneath. That way you can line up the second two by four at the perfect height. You might need more than one two by four, but if you put it right in the middle, it'll kind of give you a little room to go up and down very easily and get it lined up perfectly. I like to do one end and then the other end and then the middle. Now you're gonna wanna do the same thing as we did the first time, drill holes through the holes and then drill the screws through the holes. Now with this, the most important thing is getting it lined up perfectly. Cause you don't have the piece behind to, to push up against it. You're gonna have to hold it with your hand. Just make sure your hand is not behind the actual two by four. Ideally, you want just the tiniest gap between the two two by fours at the top. So you have a nice stable base. You don't want it overlapping, 
you can do that, then you won't have as big of a base to screw in your actual PVC pipe, which we will get to in a second. The best way to do this is to have two drills so you can drill the holes and then screw the thing in afterwards, but I just gotta switch back and forth. All right, like I said, very important, try to line it up. One. Goes in so easy. All right, I'm gonna do the far end and then the two middle braces. Don't forget to make the hole first. Also, don't try to grab the bit before it stops spinning. That was almost really bad. Now we get the middle braces. Now at this point, you might be seeing a little bit of an inconsistent gap where the gaps at the end are a little bit tighter than the gaps in the middle. So what you wanna do is look for the bracket that has the biggest gap and then screw that one in first. Doesn't make a huge difference, but you just wanna make sure it's even all the way through. All right, and that's the base. Now you can flip this thing over and get ready for the next step. All right, now you're gonna take your PVC pipe, throw it on top, slide it to the end. Perfect length, everything lines up perfectly. First thing you're gonna wanna do is we're gonna go back to drilling holes. You're gonna wanna drill two holes at the end into each piece of wood. That way, we're only gonna have to drill two holes in the actual PVC itself to push that down. Hopefully you guys can see where the holes are going, but they're gonna go diagonally into each two by four. So. Just like that. And then you're gonna take your wood screws and screw them right in. I totally forgot to hit play but I just drilled in two wood screws right through there. I'm gonna show you the whole process again in a second after I do the middle. So the reason why you're gonna to wanna to screw holes in the middle and fasten it in the middle first is because you want the PVC to be kind of stretched out. If you do one end and then the other end, sometimes you can push the size of the PVC in and then it kind of like bows it upwards. So you wanna make sure this thing is fastened down. And what I like to do is put two holes in this. One hole is gonna screw into the left board and come from the right side, and the other hole is gonna be the opposite. So, you really are gonna wanna get drill bits that are big enough to make a hole for your screw to go straight through. I don't have one, so what I do is make the hole and then spin the drill bit around to make the hole bigger. I'll show you what I do. Probably not the smartest thing in the world, but it gets done. You don't need to worry about these holes slowing you down. They don't, you'll slide right over it. As long as like they're flush, which they will be because PVC cuts super easy, you don't have to worry about anything. It's not gonna slow you down. You can make a million of these holes. Remember, you're gonna need a drill bit that's long enough to go all the way through the PVC pipe. So you might need an extender or just a longer drill bit for the actual screwdriver part. And don't forget to make the small pilot hole for this as well. There we go, nice and tight. Make sure you really crank down on it so it's not moving. This whole thing, I could probably grind on already. So we're gonna go straight to the end. Oh no. You're okay. All right, we're back to drilling pilot holes. I'm gonna do one hole for the left side, one hole for the right side, just like the other end. All right, two more wood screws. These don't need to be too long. I just used whatever I had laying around the house. How easy that goes in. 
just make sure you press on it so you get it nice and tight. Don't strip the screws so you can take it off later if you want. There it is. A 10 foot PVC P rail with a two inch PVC. Nice and secure. Thing is not going anywhere. Of course, you can use boards bigger than a two by four if you want. It's just gonna be taller and heavier. This is a perfect size for practicing. And uh, these things do slide really well without wax, but I do prefer to use a little bit of wax. Just after a while, the wax kind of gets gunked up and you will have to scrape the wax off. But with that being said, let's skate this thing. There it is, there's the P-Rail, have fun.